The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. He said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or sisters or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. I think this is um, likely very difficult uh, passage because uh, it's very challenging, I think, to take Jesus at his word here. And, uh, and yet that's what we, we ought to be doing. Um, so I don't know, there's, it, there's, a lot of, there's a lot going on in this passage that I think is worth our while exploring. Um, but the challenge re remains the same. Now, I don't know if it's, um, you know, throwing dinner parties I, do, I mean, I don't throw them myself, so I don't know. Maybe you do, I, I don't, so I'm off the hook. You, maybe, you, maybe you're not. No, it's, the, it's not that. It's, it's everything social, everything celebratory, everything. What is it? it it's about, um, well, I should dig in a bit more, but it's, but it's about living the life decisively for the other. And what does, and what does that really mean? Because the reality is we can deceive ourselves by believing that we're, we're so loving, we're so generous, and yet we're just doing the things that benefit us anyway. Right? Like I'm, so, I'm so loving, I'm so generous to this guy who, whose opinion, whose good opinion of me I really value. Oh, but I'm so generous to him. I'm so generous to this one and that one and the other one. But I do receive something. If I'm, if I'm honest with myself, I receive something back by giving myself away. And I know that I do. And, the, and to, um, to the point, more to the point there, or maybe a sign that that's really happening, when I don't receive back from the guy that I expect to receive back from as a result of my generous actions, I'm very upset with him, right? Because I, I didn't get back what I, what I thought I should get back. So, so then was it an act of generosity? Was it an act of pure self-gift or was it not? Yeah, the, these, are way, these are ways we have to think about whether the, um, the measure by which we are living out our call as a missioned people reflecting the radical generosity of God. And this is really what, what Jesus is doing in, the, in this scene. Yeah, he's, and we've seen it the, the, the past few, say, chapters of, of Luke. We're seeing what Jesus is trying to do. He's, he's trying to animate Israel to, to really be God's people. And so you, you're a people called by God to live for him, live totally for him, live for his purposes, advance his purposes, advance God's agenda in the world. That's what, you, that's what is, uh, say, exclusive to you. This is your call. This is what makes you a people, is that you're given over to God's purposes, and yet you're not doing it. Yeah, so, and then he's trying to then re revive this people, you know, one heart at a time, to, to both receive the generosity of God and to, and to live it out, to make it real for others. And this then is uh, the way that God intends to go about um, uh, reviving his people. I was going to say remaking his people. He does it. He wants, to re he wants to remake his people heart by heart. He wants to renew them so that they could become again the restorative force in the world that they were intended to be. They can only be the restorative force in the world if they're committed to this, live, living out God's radical generosity. And in, in a world where self-deception is always at hand for us, I say in a world, my, it's my heart, right, where, where I'm so eager to deceive myself, and even if I'm not eager to deceive myself, it's almost impossible to not deceive myself. Right? In, that, in this world, Jesus is keen on ways that we can demonstrate or may, ways that we know for sure that we're living our lives according to the call. Now, there's a little bit, there's a little bit more here at the end, right? Um, Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. 
is very, is very significant. We, we ought to, I think, we ought to hold on to it. What is it? the resurrection for the first century Jew is uh, that time where God will act decisively to, to put the world to rights. Right? Everything will be, um, I don't know, as they cleared up, everything, God's, God's justice will, will reign, be made known and will reign at last. God's, uh, God's kingdom of, of holiness uh, will, be, will be all that there is. Right? So we have, in this sense, perfect relationship with God, each and every person. And, and uh, as a result of our perfect relationship with God, we also have the enlivening relationships with each other, perfect relationships with, with each other, and the rest. It's, it is, in fact, a civilization of love that God wants to, God wants to build up that, um, at least the, for the first century Jew, he will, he will bring to bear at the end of the age. And the, and, um, the resurrection, right, the resurrection of the faithful departed at the end of the age is, is the way that this is accomplished. But what happens is Jesus is raised from the dead in the middle of history, it, before, the, before the end of the age. And he's raised in the middle of history before the end of the age in order to set the wheels in motion here to achieve what God wants to achieve in the resurrection of the dead. And now here, you will be repaid the resurrection of the righteous. So what, what will happen at the resurrection of the righteous? You will see that you will have been living in line with God's agenda. You will, be, you will enter into a great inheritance because you will have already learned the language of the resurrection. You will have already learned the language of God's holiness and justice, right? His holy and just rule. You will, you will enter in with full heart because you've been living it all along. You've been committed to it all along, no matter what it was you faced, right? No matter what the temptations were, either way, like lack of generosity, critical spirit, and the rest. Or on the other side, this kind of um, foolhardy generosity that really also isn't in line with God's purposes because it's all about accruing benefits to yourself. No, what you, you will be living in line with God's total for the otherness here and now, advancing God's agenda and so ready to embrace his rule when at last it comes. You'll be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is what it means. You will have been advancing God's agenda. And so when his agenda comes to bear firmly, finally, fully, then you will find your, your part all, all the greater as a result of your having been habituated to it here and now. But then, my friends, it's still the challenge for us is to live today in true generosity. Yeah, and not, not simply generosity in material things. That should be very easy for us. We're the richest people the world has ever seen. We should be able to live radical material generosity. But how about generosity of spirit, right? How, how about a kind word or a smile or some, you know, and sometimes it feels like that costs us more than anything else, right? I'm ready to give someone a hundred bucks than to smile at them, you know, like I'm going to pay you off. I'm ready to pay you off every time. But no, what is it? Radical generosity of spirit. And we can have it because God's own life of love is at work in us and working through us. We just really have to, we have to ride that wave that Jesus is creating. We have, to, we have to receive his heart that is a heart of joyful thanksgiving and live that out no matter where it is we find ourselves.